Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to another chemistry lesson. In this video, we're continuing our discussion of the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Now in the last video, we talked about how to measure the pressure of the air using a barometer. Well, in this video, we're going to be learning about how to measure the pressure of an enclosed gas using a different instrument called a manometer. So once again, a barometer measures air pressure a manometer measures the pressure of an enclosed gas. Now, here in this diagram, we have what looks to be a closed manometer. Here we have a little container or a flask that has some gas in there. And there's a tube, a glass tube most likely. And there's a little valve that helps us open or, or close the gas and, and keeps that separate from the mercury if we want to do that. And over here in the right side, we have a... Uh, what's sometimes called a U-tube or a J-tube that has mercury in here. And up above the mercury on the other side, we have a vacuum. Now, probably the most important part of this uh, manometer is the difference between the two column heights of mercury. Notice that the side that the gas is on is pushed down more than the other side. That implies that the pressure of the gas is more than whatever's on the other side. And that makes sense because if there's a vacuum on this other side, then we assume that that is exerting no pressure at all. Now, the problem says that we have a closed manometer determine the pressure of the enclosed gas. Well, all we have to do to determine the pressure of this enclosed gas here that looks like it's some kind of a green gas or something on this left side is we just have to read the difference between the two column heights of mercury. So if the difference in those two heights is 278 millimeters, that means that the pressure of the gas is 278 millimeters of mercury. That's all you have to do in order to read a closed manometer. Now, that seems like a pretty easy problem. The fact is, that is a fairly easy problem, but most manometers are not closed. As it turns out, it's, it's kind of difficult to build a manometer like this where we have mercury over here and there's an actual vacuum on the other side of the U-tube or the J-tube over here. So what we do instead is we have a different kind of manometer called an open manometer. Now I'd like to show you a picture of this. Notice that it's very similar. We still have the uh, sample of gas over here. We have the gas uh, container and we have the same U-tube or J-tube that we had before that's filled with mercury. The only major difference here is that Instead of having a vacuum over here, notice that this tube is actually open. It's open to the air. So that means that air pressure is able to uh, get in over here and it's able to push down. This air pressure is pushing down on that mercury right there. Now, let's read this question. It says, an open manometer is pictured here. Determine the pressure of the enclosed gas if today's atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Well, if today's pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, that means that over here on this open side of that manometer, we have 760 millimeters of mercury pushing down on that side of the mercury. Now let's think about this. Is the gas sample exerting more pressure than the air? Or is the gas exerting less pressure than the air? Well, let's look at what's happening over here. We see that it seems like the gas is pushing down more than the air is. The air is only able to push down this much. The gas is pushing down even more than the air. So guess what? Since the gas is exerting more pressure than the air, that means we're going to have to add the column height difference to the atmospheric pressure. So that's 760 millimeters of mercury plus the 196 millimeters that we see as our column height difference. So when you add those together, you find that the gas pressure is 956 millimeters of mercury. So 
That's how you solve a problem using an open manometer. Now let's try a different kind of open manometer. This time we have one that looks kind of like this here. And the question says, an open manometer is pictured here. Determine the pressure of the enclosed gas if today's atmospheric pressure is 762 millimeters of mercury. So once again, we have a very similar setup. We have a gas uh, container over here and the gas is pushing down on some mercury over here. And this time, as we can see, the manometer is open to the air. That's why it's called an open manometer, isn't it? So the 762 millimeters of mercury is what's pushing down on this side of the mercury. So once again, we have to ask ourselves, is the gas pushing down more than the air? Or is the gas pushing down less than the air? Well, I can look at the gas here and see that the gas is pushing down less than the air is. It's not pushing down as hard as the air is. So that means that since the gas is exerting less pressure than the air, I'm going to have to subtract the atmospheric pressure minus that column height difference, which is 55 millimeters, as you see here. So when you take 762 millimeters of mercury, and subtract the 55 millimeters, we get an answer of 707 millimeters of mercury. So that's the pressure inside this gas container over here, 707 millimeters of mercury, or 707 tor, if you prefer. I hope you learned something from this video about manometers, both closed manometers, which seem to be easier, and open manometers, which require us to do some more thinking. If you learned something, please slam that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. And I would love it if you subscribe to my channel as well, so you don't miss a thing. My name is Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.